Penny Wong, welcome to In Conversation. It's great to be with you, Lynn. Thank you. Minister, do you see China as your enemy? No, I, I think we recognise the role China plays in the regional and global economy and the benefits to the Chinese people of the extraordinary development in China. What we do have an interest in is a region and a world in which there is peace, prosperity, in which sovereignty is respected and critically where you know, disputes are not resolved by power and size. Uh, but by reference to laws and norms that the international community has agreed, because that gives stability and it enables predictability. And do you feel that China is not doing that? Oh, look, uh, you know, we, we are focused on the sort of region we want. Um, we've made our views clear about, for example, China's decision to impose what we regard as coercive economic measures on us. But, you know, China is not going anywhere uh, and the new Australian government has made it very clear you know we are open to engagement but you know that the bilateral relationship with China is not the only thing which is important to us what is most important to us is the region in which we live which is why I'm here again in Southeast Asia uh, and why we spent so much time since we were elected engaging with partners here globally and also in the in the Pacific. Well, Australia's relations <coughs> with China, of course, are terribly important to us here in Southeast Asia. As is your relationship with China. If I'm an ASEAN company, mm -hmm. does this mean that I am going to have an easier time of getting into Australia? Well, uh, we have a very good trade agreement, uh, which has a very difficult acronym, ANSFTA, which is the Australian-New Zealand Free Trade Agreement. A friend of mine actually was key to negotiating it, Craig Emerson, when he was Trade Minister, and I did say to him he should have chosen a different acronym. But we are looking to upgrade that. It's actually been one of our most successful agreements. This is obviously in addition to CPTPP and RCEP. Uh, but our, uh, trade agreements and the utilisation of them is you know, something our government supports. And also when it comes to if I was an ASEAN person um, with a daughter or son wanting to go and study in Australia. Mm -hmm. Is that something again that's going to become easier under this administration? Well, I hope we, we have more international students coming back to Australia. Obviously COVID has, has really made that much more difficult. We've seen a lot more coming back. I'd say to you, one of the things that in Malaysia people spoke to me about was you know, because there were quite a lot of Malaysian students, as you probably know, in, in Australia. One of the, the uh, I suppose, benefits they see of Australia is, is you know, it's a welcoming and safe community. Um, and I hope that that is our reputation and I hope that is the experience of the overwhelming majority of students. Is Australia still then going to play this special role for the US, America's deputy sheriff? Minister Vivian, is that, is that how they address you here? I like that. I could be Minister Penny. <laughs> You're seeing uh, parts of my life here, uh, but there are, this story uh, is, it can be told by so many Australians. The story of migration, the story of you know, Balak Kampung, uh, the story of you know, your, the memories of where you came from and what that means about who you are. And that's a really important part of the Australian story. I think it matters that Australia uh, speaks to Southeast Asia in a way that recognises that we are part of this region and that our futures are shared.
So, is the new administration in Canberra looking for a reset, a reset with everybody, with China, with Southeast Asia? Look, I think the term, uh, the better term to use in relation to the relationship with China is stabilise. I think we, uh, you know, I think it would be in our mutual interests uh, for there to be greater stability in the relationship. Ultimately, uh, as I said prior to the election, whoever wins government in Australia, there are structural differences because of who we are and our interests, that will have to be managed uh, by whichever party is in government and uh, by this government uh, uh, in the context of the relationship with China. But I think it's very important to not look at the region only through the prism of China. Uh, you know, the region is where we see our future, our economic future, our economic prosperity and our security. You know, it's a, f a famous former Labor Prime Minister who talked about security in Asia, not security from Asia, Mr Keating. And that's the approach uh, in today's world that we also take, which is why you will see us engaging so closely, not just with Singapore, but with Indonesia, Malaysia and the other countries of ASEAN. Keating also proposed membership of ASEAN for Australia. Is that something that you would like to bring back onto the table? Look, we, we, are, we are very pleased that we are um, a comprehensive strategic partner of ASEAN. We are uh, one of uh, only two countries, I think, to be, have a CSP with ASEAN as an entity. Uh, and in fact, one of the early visits I made to Southeast Asia, which was to Jakarta with the Prime Minister, we also went to the ASEAN Secretariat and spoke not only to the Secretary General but to the permanent representatives about how we would take forward uh, the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership and, and really give it uh, much more weight. But not membership oh, of look, ASEAN? I think, I think that you know, we, we, we're a dialogue partner, we're a comprehensive strategic partner, we will continue to engage very closely. But if your question really what underlies it is ASEAN centrality, which I think it is, <laughs> Uh, you know, we are strong supporters of and deeply committed to ASEAN centrality and in fact the speech I uh, am giving in Singapore will talk about what we think that means. And well, what does that well, mean? Well I think, I think it means that, you know, a couple of things. One is it means that we recognise that both geographically uh, but also geopolitically ASEAN is the centre of a stable region. It means that we recognise the strength of ASEAN has been to deal with its own any disputes internally, but it also, in this world, gives ASEAN the capacity to deal with external powers. Uh, and you know, we see uh, the role that we have, you know, when we're only a middle power, we're not a superpower, uh, is engaging with ASEAN and, as an entity as well as the, part of the countries of Southeast Asia, but also to work with others to provide a strategic equilibrium, which enables the sort of region we want. So put it, putting it very bluntly, very simply, uh, ASEAN is the centre of the region uh, and if we are to have a region and preserve a region which is prosperous, peaceful, stable and which sovereignty is respected, ASEAN is key to that. Well, if Australia is supposed to have this shared future with ASEAN, why is it that the recent security pacts uh, seem to be with countries who are thousands of kilometres away? If we look at AUKUS, one may ask, that's caused some disquiet in the uh, Southeast Asian capitals. Why have agreements for security reasons, or some might even say not so nice security reasons, with people very far away, with well, countries who are very distant? Let's remember our, our, our long, most long-standing security partnership is here in Southeast Asia, um, is with the Five Powers arranged, defence arrangement. So that, that is... That, that precedes and continues the sorts of arrangements you're talking about. Uh, but look, I, I think let, we, we, we know we live in a, a period of strategic competition and Southeast Asia is no stranger to great power competition. In fact, the history of Southeast Asia is one in which the region uh, has had to negotiate and traverse uh, great power competition through many top points in history, yes. Uh, but look, we, we see first the quad arrangements as contributing to the sort of strategic equilibrium that will benefit the region. Um, not define it, but will, will, will benefit. Uh, and in terms of AUKUS, I know there's been a lot of focus on that. Australia has a, a submarine capability. Uh, we're looking to replace that. 
um, we, uh, we are, um, there are many countries in the, in the region that already have nuclear powered submarines. Um, some of them have nuclear armed submarines. We do not seek that capability. We simply are looking to replace a, 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 an old capability with a new capability and we will do so in full transparency with our partners uh, and you know, respectful of non-proliferation obligations which, in which we have a, a, a really strong record historically. What about some commentators who say, is Australia still then going to play this special role for the US we, and we, that you are America's deputy well, sheriff? Not, a, not an expression I know that every Australian politician likes, but it has been used. Well, uh, and, and sometimes I'd, I'd question the motivations of those using it. Australia acts in Australia's natural, national interest, as Singapore does, as Indonesia does, as Malaysia does, as China does. So you are we, not the America's we, we, deputy we, sheriff? Uh, we, we are an ally, but we act in our national interests. So we can, End we of can story. put that, well, we can put that I, I phrase just, to rest. I, just, I think that is, I think that is you know, not um, the way in which we see ourselves. Uh, we see ourselves as a strong ally of the United States. Uh, and ultimately, Australia makes decisions in its, na in its national interests. If we look at how you've been presenting uh, this, you know, to your counterparts, you know, you're the first Asian born uh, Australian to be foreign minister and you've been talking to the Vietnamese, to the Malaysians, and you're now in Singapore. How have you been presenting these security concerns that you have and the desire for stability the, to your counterparts? What same, have you been saying well, to I them? I think it goes to what sort of region we want. And I think we should always take it back to that because it's easy to get distracted by you know, people's different different agendas or different views, ultimately the question is, whatever differences we might have, um, whatever you know, our priorities and, and how they might differ, ultimately we do actually want very, very similar things in terms of the characteristics of the region we want, because we understand those characteristics fundamentally go to our security and our potential to continue to be economically prosperous. But I would make a point about why I talk about my background it's actually not so much about me, <laughs> it's actually about my country. See, uh, uh, the, the, the country to which I now belong is a country which has one in two of its peoples either born overseas or, with a, or a parent born overseas. That says something profoundly important about who we are, just as our uh, Indigenous Australians, our First Nations people, say something profoundly important about who we are. So one of the commitments I made before the election, and I'm determined as Foreign Minister to you know, do my, make my best effort on it, is to project the reality of modern Australia to the region and the world. But it may be said that some would say that Australia doesn't have historically that wonderful track record concerning sure, no, persons who aren't, do. to put it bluntly, white. Of course. My parents married when the White Australia policy was still in place. Before. Exactly. So, so, but, but I'm also Australia's foreign minister and I've been the finance minister. And that says something about our country and what, how we have developed and, and owned that history and on a bipartisan, com, you know, com, the collective basis rejected that policy setting decades ago. Just as we collectively uh, engaged in an apology to our First Nations people for wrongs that were done. Uh, and just as this government was elected with a commitment to further steps for reconciliation with our First Nations people. So the, the story of modern Australia is a story of a, a multicultural nation that, that is, you know, I think, one of the most successful multicultural um, you know, stories on the planet. Um, a modern dynamic In country. To Singapore. <laughs> modern, modern dynamic country, uh, which is so focused on, you know, where, what we can do in this world and drawing on our heritage and who we are. Uh, you know, and that, that is a good story that, that I want to make sure I tell to the world. For example, something like Huawei then. Why is it that Australia decides that this is not friendly?
is the framing of friend and foe mm. in our now current you know, foreign policy, people keep talking about that. Is, is that this actually, yours or? Uh, well, <laughs> I think that generally speaking, it's been this used a lot. Is that, yeah. is that damaging to relationships rather than countries looking at specific state actions? That's a good question. Uh, and, we, you know, and one of the things Singapore really brings to the table is I think you have very acute strategic thinkers in your politicians and in your academics. And I've certainly benefited from engagement and reading some of what has been written and said. And this comes back to my earlier point about the region. I think if you focus on, are you with us or against us? You add, it's the wrong question often. You also add to the risks associated with the more competitive environment in which we live. And we understand that we live in a time of strategic competition, but what we have to do together is to avert that escalating. But we, that's we, difficult, and isn't it? it is very difficult. But one of the points I make is, you know, instead of the friend or foe frame, come back to what do we want? You, you may not agree with how Australia has handled some things, but you would agree that you want trade arrangements to be predictable. So why, for example, something like Huawei then? How to say, why is it that Australia decides that this is, so to say, not Friendly? Well, no, that's, we, 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 made, we made decisions just as Singapore can make its own decisions and just as China can make its own decisions about investment in our, what we regard as our critical infrastructure. That's, part, that's a sovereign decision that other nations also exercise. But it implies, therefore, well, that uh, Huawei I, I, is not an independent well, uh, uh, company and therefore well, can't be trusted. No, but, but we can make that a decision about investment in critical infrastructure as other nations do. But doesn't it bring us back to this unfortunate friend and foe no, framing? I think, I don't, well, I don't use that language. Uh, and I again say, you know, we, we want a region where sovereignty is respected. We want a region where power and size do not determine outcomes. We want a region uh, and a world where trade, uh, food security, economic engagement are not weaponised for strategic purposes. And I actually think that's the same thing Singapore, Indonesia and Malaysia want. Do you think that ASEAN will ever overtake China as Australia's largest trading partner? Uh, look, you know, if you look at the trajectories of where Indonesia's economy might go by 2030, um, you know, I, th I think uh, you know, ASEAN is uh, such an extraordinary uh, entity and collection of, of different nations and different economies. So, you know, I, I hope for the people of Southeast Asia that that development continues. But you don't necessarily see that happening. Oh, China is such well, a large trading yeah, partner so, so, for Australia. It is, but you know, yeah, China is a large trading partner of, of many, many countries. Um, the US is, I think, our lar largest investment partner. You know, I do come from the, the school that thinks that diversified, uh, engaged trading and financial relationships are a good thing for stability. And you think also that can extend to security as well, or do you want to keep that separate? In other words, trade is one in one corner and security is another. Well, I don't think Australia is a country that's sought to weaponise trading arrangements. And who do you think has? Well, I've just, I'll just make that point. I don't think we are. <laughs> in fact, Australia, as you know, uh, we may not be quite as... Uh, you know, open in terms of trade as Singapore, but we are an economy that has developed in great part because of our position in world markets and our capacity to sell into world markets. Uh, and we have consistently over decades being advocates for uh, open, fair and predictable trading arrangements under successive governments. So no contradiction, you feel, between having to trade with a country as well as having security arrangements that may not be in their favour? Well, I, I'm, I'm not going to comment on what others think that our security arrangements are. What I'd say to you is we, we, uh, Australia is a country that seeks st stability and peace. And we are a middle power or a substantial power. We're not a superpower. You know, we have a very similar interest to the countries of ASEAN, which is... You know, we want that peace and stability, but we will engage with other countries in the interests of that peace and stability. So, Minister, final questions. What is the phrase that you would like to use when talking about China-Australia relations? Well, uh, stability, 
uh, and the respectful management of difference. And between Australia and ASEAN, what is that phrase that you hope that people will always say when they, you look at ASEAN and you look at Australia? Partners, close friends. Minister Penny Wong, thank you very much for being on In Conversation. It's been great, thank you.